Hi friends, before I get into this video, I wanted to mention that the creations here today have been inspired by Handcrafted by Just Gigi, and I will add her Instagram and other links to my description box. So I have a project that I want to do together. This is the first time I've ever done this. Uh, I would like to make some fabric envelopes, and I would like to make them out of vintage handkerchiefs. So this one is quite plain, it is just white. It is bigger than my mat here. My mat is 12 by 12. I can see that it's not completely on screen. Let me see if I can, I can get it completely on screen, but you'll have to pardon some of the other things that you see. I am working in my new craft room, but it is not done, so my lighting is a little bit wild. And you can see a little reflection of that right there. Do you see that? That's the reflection of, of a light. Actually, it's, it's considered a shop light that you would use maybe in your garage or your shop or something like that. So at any rate, I figured we would go ahead and do this. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we can see that this handkerchief is about uh, 12, so 13 by 13, basically. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut it in half. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on my cutting mat as not to ruin my new countertop. My new countertop is resin and I don't want to destroy it. So we're gonna use this, this is my Cricut ruler here, and I figured we could use that because it's nice and long, and it, you know, it should be able to stay in place for me. Now, the first thing I think I need to do is find the center. I suppose I could fold it and find the center. Yeah, let me just do that real quick. It might be easier that way. All right, I've got the center. So what I'm gonna do is actually snip it. I don't wanna mark it. So I'm gonna snip it, because I'm gonna cut it anyway. I'll make sure I'm on camera. Okay, I am. So I probably need to get myself a brand new pair of scissors so that I have a nice sharp pair. These ones are fine for crafting, but I've used them a lot and they are not as sharp as they once were. So now that I got that snipped, we know where the center is. And also, since this is bigger than my mat, I won't end up, you know, getting onto the countertop. So I'm just gonna put this in place. And then I'm gonna use my rotary cutter and I'm not, you know, true confession, I am not a seamstress, so I'm not really accustomed to using these tools, but where I got it on clearance one day because I figured, hey, it's good to have one, right? So let's just see, you know, how, how we do. Now, you saw me hit something there. There's a little hole in, the, in this mat where you can like hang it up. So I did hit that. Let me see if this will pull apart. Not quite, I need to go at it one more time. Let me see how we did. Okay, we've got it pretty good. I'll snip that with scissors. All right, I'm gonna pull this down just so I can get away from that hole. You see that hole up there, is that showing? Yeah. So anyway, I just don't wanna be near that. See if we can get the rest of this thing cut, or at least close enough. Let's see. I never know how much pressure to put on this thing. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest with my scissors. If I put enough pressure on it, I, I wouldn't have to do this, but like I said, I'm just learning how to use it, and so I think I'm a little nervous Nelly about it or something. All right, this cut should be a little bit easier because we can see the lines and there is plenty of space. So let's fold it in half one more time so we can get the nice center crease. So what I could tell, I went online to find the measurements of envelopes. And so what I could tell was that some envelopes are made from like a perfect square. So I figured since the first time I've done this, that's how I would do it. And then maybe the next time that we do this together, we can do a different shape. And 
and let's do it to this one. So what this is going to do, this nice big handkerchief is going to give us four fabric envelopes. So obviously they're not going to be huge, but I think they'll be perfect for a junk journal. I probably don't have to be as careful as I'm being, like with making sure it's perfectly straight and all that. But since I've never done it, I, I don't want to I don't want to truly wing it. You guys know I really do wing things a lot of times, but I am trying to do this right since we are <laughs> doing this together. I did not experiment ahead of time, so. All right, there's that. All right, my friends, so I believe that we um, bring in the sides just like you would if it was, you know, a piece of paper. and then fold up the bottom. Now it looks a little crooked to me, so let me bring, let's see, did I cut, see, so maybe, this is the part I don't know, did I cut it wrong? Well, that looks better now. Okay, so I just had to bring it over a little bit, right? Okay, and then this comes up here. Okay, so this is even with this interesting and then this goes like this well hold on not quite there we go so that makes like a almost a perfectly square envelope all right i have confirmed that this in fact you know the perfect square makes a square envelope so that's what it's going to look like now i can't I can't sew it together because obviously I can't sew it together. <laughs> so I'm going to use 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac to glue the edges. But before I do that, how about if I go ahead and I add some lace to this top edge? Or if I make this the bottom, because you see how this has like the hemmed part? If I make that the bottom, then that can look really strong. And then this part... I can put the lace on because, you know, it doesn't have the hemmed part there. So I could put the lace on here and it will dress it up. What do you guys think about that? I think we could give that a try. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go give that a try. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. When I was looking at templates for paper envelopes, I noticed that they had made cuts in them where the folds are. So I decided to go ahead and do that. I only did it on the first one. I did not do it on the other three. And because this fabric's really thin, I don't think it's something that's necessary, but if I was working with a thicker fabric, I could see why that would be important. friends I went ahead I took it to my sewing machine I chose this lace this was given to me by my friend Maria at Maria's miscellany thank you Maria I went ahead I sewed it on I left a little extra I, I don't ever want to cut it too short and then sew it I'd rather go ahead and then you know trim it when I'm when I'm all done so let's go ahead and do that real quick I think I'll trim it from the underside here so I don't cut into the fabric actually let me take a look when I close it okay I think if I trim it straight like this I think that'll look good so let's give that a try I know I probably look like I'm all thumbs you guys but because like sewing I don't I'm not afraid to do it but I'm not experienced with it, like just little things. So, you know, I like to like to take my time. <laughs> Most things you guys know I jump in with both feet and I don't even think twice, but not so much for sewing. I'm gonna trim this edge straight just because that's what I did on the other side. And 
going to make sure this is trimmed so it just lines up with the rest of the envelope. Okay, so that's looking pretty cute, you guys. Cuter than I thought it was going to look, you know, because it's fabric, so it, it, it moves around and stuff. So for my first one, this is not coming along too bad. It's not perfectly straight, but I still think it's adorable and would be perfectly fine in a junk journal or for to hold ephemera and give as a gift to somebody, whatever. All right, so let me go find some embellishments. All right, friends, so you guys remember my pretty little mason jars that I made for my craft room. So I got some flowers in these. So I brought this over so that we could take a look and see what would go on here. Now here's something we have to remember is that because this is cotton, it's it, there's no strength to it. Um, thinking now, uh, you know, we do these things and we learn as we go. So I think it could be a positive thing to double layer it, you know, with maybe something, a material that's a little bit stiffer, uh, could make it a little stronger. But that being said, not that we have to do that, but if you were going to put a heavy embellishment on it, you might want to do that. So like a button could go down here at the bottom of it, but I wouldn't put anything heavy like a button up at the top. So let's see if we have any flowers that, now these are really lightweight. They are foam and they're super lightweight. That would not cause a problem at all. These were given to me by my friend Kathy of Kathy's Favorite Things and that could work. Also, these are these are these are too big. Let's not do those red ones. Let's see what else we have in here. Um, well, we don't want to do the paper ones, so those can go back in. Now these little paper ones could go on that, oh, ooh, <laughs> that's pretty cute. So if we were going to use this in a junk journal, uh, personally I would prefer to go with stuff that's flat. Mm, boy, that's cute. If, if this was going to be just like a little embellishment envelope, then we could go with things that were lightweight, but you know, a little more 3D. So the choices, the choices, hmm, oh boy. Well, let's make more than one. Uh, I will plan on making more than one. I'm gonna do one with flat stuff and one with the uh, puffier stuff. So hang tight and I'll grab what we need to do the flat one first. All right, friends, I think I've decided to go with the pink flowers. And again, since this is our first one, let's just experiment. Let's have fun with it. Let's not, you know, get too obsessive about it. Also, just so you know, I'm getting low on my glue here, so I apologize if it takes it a little while to <laughs> get to the bottom of the thing here where I can, you know, use it. I am keeping it tilted, but still. Now, I want to make sure it's not going through. Okay, so far, so good. So I'm going to put this pink one here, but before that dries, I want to tuck this one underneath just a little bit. I'm going to tuck this one underneath. Okay. Now I'm going to press that with my fingers, and actually, I'm going to grab my handy-dandy clothespins. I think you guys know by now that I like to use clothespins and it's going to serve two purposes here. One, it's going to hold these flowers in place, but two, just in case any of that glue seeped through the material, this will keep it from touching the other material and it won't get stuck together. I want to put these here in the corners. I wonder if this is a little misshapen now though that I have the uh, clothespin. So let's take a look at, okay, I think it will end up being somewhat like this. So I think it's safe to go ahead and put these little pink ones up there. This one, the rhinestone is not right in the center, but again, we're not obsessing about this. We're just putting this together and having a good time with it. So now I was just wondering, 
is do we want to leave it like this kind of leave it simple obviously not like this with clothes pins on but you know what I mean do we want to leave it simple with just some pink flowers do I want to go into these corners with some pink marker and uh, just see if a little color will spread up the envelope let's try it I'm gonna pick the lightest pink that I have which I think is this one yep I think this is the, the lightest one uh, and they always come out darker than what's on the cap. I don't know why, they just do. Let's give it a try, guys. Let's just see what happens if I put a little pink on here. I'm not drawing a picture, just kind of as if we were almost inking it with an ink pad. Yeah. How about that? Let's do that with the other corner too. It'll spread a little on its own, but probably not a ton. All right, so I think that's good. I don't want to do too much. I just wanted to give it a little splash of color, and I also didn't want to be afraid to do that. All righty, let's, let's remove these and check and see if they're dry. It doesn't take too long for that glue to dry. Okay, just giving it a little squeeze. I'll try it on the corners too, and then we will take a look at our work that we did, and then maybe off camera I'll do some more and show them all to you in the end. All right, so there is our first one. I am going to zoom in for you so that you can see it. Look how cute it is, you guys. Let me put my autofocus back on just so that you can get a nice crisp view of it. I think it turned out pretty cute. It's our first one. I've been dying to do this for like a really long time. Finally got to do it. We'll make sure that no glue stuck. No, it's perfect. This stuck, but it didn't stick to the inside. And it's adorable, you guys. Look, ah. And the back is just nice and plain, so we could literally write something on there. You know what? Before I start on the rest of my envelopes, let's go ahead and write something on there. Now this might bleed, so we're going to want to be a little bit careful. I'm gonna choose this pen. It's got a super fine point. This is really light pink. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to see it. And I don't want it to bleed through to this side, so hold on one second. Let me put a piece of paper or something in there. Okay, I had this envelope handy here, so we're just gonna slide this in there. Now we can flip it over, and then we'll do kind of like old fashioned. We'll write from up here. Ah, that looks cute, right? And then we'll write to. There we go. I love it, you guys. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and make some more. I will show you my finished products when, once I'm done, so hang tight. All right, friends, I made three more. So here was our original one. Totally adorable, right? I am recording. It's pitch dark outside, uh, so I'm using artificial lighting, and I hope it's okay. Here, I'll put this down because it might be better if I'm not holding it and moving it around. Ignore the shadow there. So anyway, here is the yellow one. Guys, I hope that you can tell that I went ahead and I put yellow polka dots on it. It's got the white trim, the yellow flowers. I did to and from on the back of each of them. So this is my little sun shiny yellow one. I love it. Then we have another pink one. And this one already had embroidered on it this little flower with pink with a pink bud so I added this one now this was given to me by my friend Kathy of Kathy's favorite things I put some pink lace on it and two pink flowers up in the corners I did some pink around the corners here and oops I forgot to write to and from on there so let me see oh I don't know where my pink tiny pen like this is. Hmm, I don't want to do it in purple. I'm going to wait. I'm going to find my pink tiny pen and then I'll do it properly. So here is this one. I think it turned out super cute. And last but certainly not least is this one with the teal. Whoops, I'm so sorry. This one with the teal. So what I did with this one a little bit different, I did the lace here 
Of course, I put the flowers on. I did a little gold leaf here, and then I did lace all the way around the front and the back, and then I did to and from in my teal colored pen. So friends, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I had been wanting to make these for a really long time. Just hadn't had the time to do it. And I just thought, you know, I was I was bringing some new stuff into my craft room because you know I'm organizing it now, trying to bring things in. And I was getting ready to put this hanky away and I was like, no, 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 I'm not gonna put it away. I'm gonna sit down right now and I'm gonna work on this little project that I've been wanting to do forever. So here they are, I hope you love them. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for watching. See you soon.